Good morning. It's great to have you with us. Have you ever wondered how you can put lots of communication for uh, anyone, but especially for our aging population together in one easy platform? Well, we have someone from Blooming Health who is going to share a fantastic platform to make sure that you know exactly what's going on and when, where it's happening and what information you need. So Blooming Health is coming on. We'll have uh, Dr. K Kavitha uh, Naya Sambandam coming on and she'll share some of that information with us. We also have Steve with a caregiver question and we'll have Melinda Hughes on answering your fitness and health questions. So let's go ahead and go right to Steve and see what he, kind of question he has today. And I hope you're all staying cool and the smoke is kind of moving away. I'm Mary Winters, a gerontologist and the host of your show, Visionary Aging. Let's see why he's not coming up. Oh, I'm probably in a, in a only mode here. Let's see if we can get rid of that. And we'll turn that on. And there we go, the magic of TV. We have Steve McCullough on with us. Hey, Mary, I was waiting for my intro music. Oh, I know. I, yeah, it's <laughs> off a little bit today, a little off beat today. So, no worries. How are you? I'm great. So, what kind of question did did our viewers give you? So, one of our viewers sent in a great question. Their father is no longer able to stay in the home by himself, and they want to know how do they start the process of looking for a place for him, whether that's assisted housing or whatever that might be, but how do, how do you even start the process? Of yeah, it's, house? it's a really good question. It really needs some assessment. And I, I, let me see if I can find, um, I always bring this up, but I think it's really important for people to see. Um, it's the wheel that I created to put any kind of a plan together. So let me just right. look this up. Um, basically we look at what is the senior, what are the seniors wishes? How do we keep them safe? And what does their financial picture look like? What kind of budget do they have to work with? And then the arrow around the edge of the diagram uh, represents how things change over time. So they will change over our lifetime multiple times what our needs are in these areas. Uh -huh. uh, but that said, um, it's really important. So they've obviously established that either they can't afford to keep them home with what uh, resources they have, or maybe he um, is not accepting help in the house. I'm not sure. Right. Yeah. Um, it's unclear on that. Unfortunately. Yeah. So uh, really looking at that component to understand, because we still have to budget. So I would say, look at geographically where you want him to be. Uh, look at what kinds of needs he has. And sometimes those are a little harder to, for family members to really see because um, you see them every day or you're not really understanding the cognitive deficits, but you see that there's some kind of loss. Um, right. Sometimes we often I see that people think um, the cognitive um, management is something that's not as big of a deal as they, they think it might be, which is why they may be acting out or um, isolating. So really assessing what your parent might need is extremely important as far as support and cognitive support, physical and cognitive support, and looking at what their budget might be. And I don't know if they're moving from a home that they own or uh, something that they rent, but that's also a very serious consideration. If they own something and you're selling it, there will be a tax consequence to that. So talking with the CPA um, it's also really important to avoid some of those issues. And if you have a financial planner, um, putting that money away so that it's benefiting him long term. So I'm sorry to and kind of give this time really train as well, right? Because you got to, if you do own your house and the goal is to sell the house and use that for. It's your very, home. very frequent. Yeah. So right. it's, it's really important to look at what those tax consequences could be because. Mm -hmm. And talking to a good CPA because you want to take advantage of everything you can um, right. in relation to the tax benefits with that, but you may have a consequence where you're paying out a considerable amount too. So it's sure. it's it's important to invest the money appropriately, have it liquid. Um, so I'm sorry that it's not a simple answer, but as far as looking for the place, there are lovely small boutique 
placement services. We work with many. We know quite a few um, in our immediate area and some of the larger chains. Uh, we've worked with families even from out of state to identify once they've started talking to the locations to help them identify whether that sounds like a good fit. But uh, some of these small boutique placement services can be wonderful as far as helping to actually find the location within your budget and the geographic area that you desire. So are, it's, there, are these facilities like rated? I know, like for instance, if you want to look up like sure. a doctor or an attorney or something and see what, you know, is there anything in their background that might be concerning? Are these facilities, is there a similar type of place you, or, you know, place you could go to to get that kind of information if there's like complaints about the facility or sure. anything like that? Yeah, so it goes state by state. So um, each state has their own licensing. Um, some are not actually licensed. Some states are not actually licensed. So that may be more difficult in those areas. But some of your bigger states, like on each coast, obviously California and New York are, are licensed. You go to the licensing board, just look up assisted living licensing, and you can do a search on the licensing. You can look up uh, and see what kind of background they have, what kind of complaints they have. Sometimes they have multiple complaints and they're unfounded, mm -hmm. um, but you can ask those questions. They're required by law to also keep their licensing surveys in their facility. So if you're going to a smaller, say, boarding care with only six beds, you can actually ask them to make that available to you, any size. You can have them make that available to you. So that way you know what type of complaints or how how good their community is. And you can look at the type of complaints. Some of them can be really minor, kind of like going into a restaurant and right. um, something was off by one degree or uh, something very, very minor that's like, I feel comfortable that, you know, it was fixed and this is not an issue. Um, but yeah, it's, it's important to look it up. It's important to ask if you do work with someone like myself or, or, um, you know, care management, or if you're working with placement services to ask them what kind of a background they have. And you can, in some locations, some states, you can even sign up for updates. So if they have complaints in the future, you will automatically get those. And that might even be something um, that Looming Health can even offer too. So we'll have right. to see. But we have a fabulous guest today. I know, I'm excited. Yeah, so um, I'm excited too. And so Kavitha uh, uh, Nayana Sambandan, and I'm sorry, I'm not going to get her name completely correct. I worked on it so hard to try to try to go through it. Uh, mm -hmm. But she is amazing, and she's the co-founder of Blooming Health. And so I'm going to have her on, and we're going to talk a little bit about what she has uh, to offer in this platform. And um, we'll bring it back in a little later on for this day in sports. How's that? Sounds good. Have a great show. All right. Thank you. And so, yes, we have um, a fabulous, fabulous program that I'm really excited to introduce. And Kavitha Nayanam Samban um, is the co creator of this organization. And so, let me go ahead and bring her in right now. And we'll talk a little bit more about her platform and and how it works. Welcome, Kavitha, how are you? Oops, I still have you on mute. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thank you so much, Mary. Thanks for having me and really excited to be on this show and meet the About Senior Solutions community. Oh, absolutely. So tell us about your platform and a little bit how it works. Yeah, absolutely. So Blooming Health, essentially we started this company to solve this problem around healthy aging in place. I'm glad the caregiver asked that question before as well. And of, of course, this is the problem that About Senior Solutions is helping with as well. The key problem, especially what we are solving for, is improving that communication, information, and awareness for older adults and caregivers on how they can get the support that they need and in a very proactive manner as well. So we have a technology platform that helps aging in place service providers to meet older adults and caregivers where they are. Meaning there's a lot of barriers in terms of communication for older adults in like technology barriers, uh, language barriers, and also trust yes. barriers because they don't know who to trust, where the information is coming from. 
So our goal is to empower that trusted relationship that they can have with providers like you, like the local area agency for aging, or a community-based organization that's been around for hundreds of years, providing trusted services to people in a culturally sensitive manner. In California, you have a very diverse population that speaks a lot of different languages. And these community organizations are helping them with day-to-day -day nutrition, meals, transportation, and also helping them to even get help with their activities of daily living, like home care aids in their homes. So how do we help them to get this information from them and in a timely manner? So our platform has two sides to it. There's a web-based platform through which the staff at these organizations can log in and use that as their central communication system. Because today, they mainly have to make individual phone calls to older adults. So imagine with the staff shortage that is going on across industries, a single staff can only make like 10, 20 phone calls at a time. So our system is enabling them to reach hundreds of older adults, if not thousands, in their preferred communication channel, whether it can be text message, if they have a flip phone, or if they have a landline, they can receive it via a landline voice call. And if they have a tablet, they can receive an email and in their preferred language. So you can receive it as a text in English. I can receive a voice call in Spanish and Steve can receive an email in Russian, right? But the staff just has to send one message and it reaches everybody in this way. So that's apart great. from, yeah, definitely. So that's definitely saving a lot of time for the staff. And the older adults and caregivers can receive the information in a timely manner. And the key difference that we are trying to make is today, people like the caregivers and the older adults realize that they have a need very late in this journey, right? So imagine your local area agency for aging reaching out to you and checking in on you. Hey, John, how are you doing? How is your health? Do you have any needs on food, housing, transportation? them reaching out to you and giving this help at 60 years and also at 70 years and also at 80 and then at 100 too, when you have different needs as you go through this aging yes. journey. And, and it's really important. Yeah, just like our arrow that we have around our, yeah. you know, our own Venn diagram too. Exactly. Everybody's needs changes and change. And, and it's wonderful that you can alter and change that so rapidly as well. Uh, so tell me a little bit about some of the success stories that you've had. I know you started in New York, correct? Yes, absolutely. So yeah, I'm based in Jersey City, New Jersey, and we started in New York and have seen really good success over the last two years. Interestingly, we started during March 2020, not knowing what's going to hit us. We didn't plan anything, but we started our pilot program in March 1st, 2020, and that was the time when New York and, of course, all these states started experiencing COVID. And we started texting with older adults on a daily basis to see how they're doing and also what needs they were having and connecting them to local resources. And that's where the idea for Blooming Health was born. And then we launched in a community organization in East Harlem, New York, in November 2020. Fast forward to today, we are working across the state of New York. We have a partnership with the New York State Office for Aging. And they're funding our solution for all the local aging in place providers to use our platform and connect with the one and a half million older adults that they're serving across the state. And caregivers are a key component of this as well, sure. especially because like they need a lot more support and there's an increasing caregiver burden uh, uh, as the growing aging population. So we are also connecting them to these local supportive sources as well. So apart from New York, we are growing across the country um, in different states like Texas, of course, California, Florida, uh, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Arizona, and we're bringing on more states by the end of this year. And we have partnerships with the AARP Foundation and with healthcare organizations, especially primary care organizations as well. Oh my gosh. So how broad will this can this go as far as the resources that are connected in this platform? Share a little bit about that. Yeah, absolutely. So the way we have designed the platform is like it needs to be really as simple as possible for the older adults and caregivers. But we are using really sophisticated technology in the back end. So we are starting to use AI and natural language processing to make sure that we are able to cater to older adults across the spectrum in terms of the age, in terms of their abilities, in terms of their uh, different needs that they have, as you mentioned. Um, so 
essentially we want to help them to access as the single touch point like blooming health wants to be the single touch point for all aging in place needs across your aging journey and we want to use ai as a way to start to predict those needs in advance as well uh, so you don't have to be worried about okay now i'm turning 75 i'm not able to cook anymore how do i now find meals that suit my taste, that suit my preference and, and my location and my cost and all the other things you mentioned in that circle applies across the aging in place needs, right? So mm -hmm. we are making using technology to personalize this experience for older adults based on where they are. Um, so definitely it's going to apply across the, pro, across the aging in place needs, in, especially around non-medical needs from mm -hmm. food, housing, transportation, caregiver support, uh, all the way up to uh, any type of uh, needs they have, even around financial support, um, especially in AARP Foundation for collaboration, we are looking mm -hmm. at a lot more about student loan debt. It's interesting, right? Like how oh, many older adults? Yeah, interesting. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's affecting them, and that in turn affects their other benefits that they can receive. And we work with them on SNAP benefits and HEAP and MSP and all those other things that, again, our customers are helping them with. And we are enabling them to use the platform to identify those needs, address those needs, and also close the loop on their health outcomes. Ultimately, what we are addressing is what they now term as social drivers of health. Yes. Uh, so these are day-to-day -day lifestyle and, and also um, health related needs that we are addressing, which in turn helps older adults to stay in their homes as long as they want and as safe as it is possible. And also in terms of staying out of the hospital um, and keeping their health and keeping their balance for fall prevention, because all of these community organizations provide a lot of health and wellness classes, like fall prevention classes, Tai Chi classes, uh, and nutrition classes. So we are sending them reminders, again, in a customized way. If they want to hear about arts and music or health and wellness, or if you're a, a, a male and you want to hear more about like politics and others, so suiting everybody's needs and interests, especially this is important for socialization. You've talked yes. about social isolation in your yes. show before, and yes. we all know how important that is. So we want to integrate the different parts of aging in a holistic and, uh, and in a positive way. So does the individual or the family member, do they go through and kind of click through what your interests are, what your needs are? So you fill out a general um, like in information sheet and or questionnaire and you put that together and then boom, you start receiving some of those interesting items. Yeah. So the way we do it is in a more organic way. So for example, our customers, the community-based organizations and area agencies of aging have a history of their relationship with the older adults, right? So they're already helping them with some of these needs. So the way we make it more structured and systematic as you're getting at is through these monthly check-ins. So we are sending a monthly check-in for the older adults and caregivers that's been developed, co-developed with our customers to be specific for their population. And it goes through the different needs for each month, like in terms of food, housing, transportation, and caregiver support, and anything else that the customer wants to include. And we try to keep it short and concise as well. And the older adults and caregivers can answer these questions via text, voice calls, and email by pressing a number on their keypad or by talking into their phone. So it's as simple as that. We don't wanna leave behind anybody, even if they don't have internet, they're living in a rural area, they don't speak English as the first language. So that's the goal. And I think you have, what, 40 or so languages? Yes, uh, today we offer 27 different languages. Um, and it covers a lot of majority of the, say, Asian languages in terms of Middle East and, and uh, South Asian as well. And, and also from, uh, of course, Spanish and Russian and Polish. And we're starting to include more uh, Caribbean and other languages as well. And uh, so in the next two months, we should be la adding up to 80 languages on the platform. And especially in, Latin, in California, I know we have like Hmong and Vietnamese and T Tagalog. And so those languages are also coming. Absolutely. That's wonderful. So if you are looking, if you are looking for support with this platform, please go to www.gobloominghealth.com. And Kavitha, if someone wanted to get a hold of you a little more directly, how would they reach out to you? Yeah, it's the same. So it's Kavita, K-A-V-I-T-H-A, at gobloomingmh.com. 
www.mentalhealthhelp.com. Fantastic. Well, I hope you'll be able to come on at the very end of the program. Thank you yeah. so much for this information. It's so important. Absolutely. And, um, and please take advantage of this. So I, I am so excited for what you're doing. And it's so important to connect people and to not isolate. We need to go and take advantage of some of these things that you offer. So I am really excited about what you're doing. So thank, thank you, you so much. One last thing I want to say for your audience is if you're listening to this and if you're working, or if you're not already connected to your local area agency for aging, look them up, talk to them, and they can be a great resource for you. Um, area Agency for Aging. You can find them on eldercarelocator.gov. Uh, I can share the website with Mary as well. And if you talk to them, let them know, hey, I want to hear from you and talk to Blooming Health so they can connect with you through us. All right. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you, Mary. Take care. Right. Sounds great. Thank you. And then we're going to bring up our Melinda. And so she's she'll talk about fitness and health today for us. So let's go ahead and get started. Good morning, Melinda. <laughs> um, really, really awesome guest today. Fantastic. Um, I know when you talk about nutrition and, and she can connect you right to SNAP and some of the other nutritional programs. I mean, wow. What an what yeah. influencer. So, so cool. Yeah. Um, today, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, kyphosis, which is commonly the uh, dowager's hump that people can develop as they get older. Ah. Um, there's essentially three main reasons that people can develop kyphosis, which is that slumped forward sure. posture. Um, the first being osteoporosis, just having low bone density and losing bone as we get older. It leads to compression fractures and just the vertebrae of the spine starting to curve forward. Um, poor posture, of course. Um, and that poor posture can can gradually weaken the muscles that support the spine. And then that third major component to developing kind of that hunched forward posture is muscle weakness. Mm. So those are three things that we're obviously working, um, you know, working against when uh, working with people at the strength shop is we're improving, increasing bone density, improving and in, increasing um, flexibility so that we can maintain our proper posture. And then of course, we're strengthening the muscles. Um, you know, there's a certain amount of a, the curvature to the spine that is normal. It's just when it starts to progress where um, you've got that that forward kind Sarcopenia of sarcopenia sets in. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And um, but it sounds like it sounds like about two thirds of that. I mean, maybe we can help um, osteoporosis too with some changes. Oh um, yeah. Making sure we're managing vitamin D. Um, so, but it sounds like at least two thirds or more of that issue can be solved with really maintaining our posture and our muscles. Yeah. And in increasing bone density. So yeah, those, mm -hmm. those, are, it's, that's kind of the three things we need to focus on. So if you can see that you're already starting to develop that type of posture, mm -hmm. um, obviously you want to focus on in your daily life on maintaining good posture and you want to start to get regular physical activity, preferably strength training. Um, and you want to nice. incorporate some stretching into your day. Mm. Um, so one of the stretches that we can do is just like if you're sitting up nice and straight, nice and tall, mm -hmm. you can just sink your chin and tuck your chin towards your uh, sternum. And it stretches the back of your neck out. Can you feel mm. that, Mary? Yeah, I can feel it. <laughs> it feels um, really good. <laughs> that's really good. And you can do that anywhere. You can do that you sitting can. on the couch. Waiting for um, your doctor, waiting yeah. on the phone with someone. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so just that little that little piece can really help um, stretch out that area of the neck Fantastic. and then help you just kind of maintain that that posture throughout the rest of the day. And of course, right. there's other you know, there's other exercises that people can do at home that help to enhance and, and promote flexibility and strengthen the muscles. Well, I think people can even consider coming into the strength shop if they live in um, LA area. So yeah. Help people get a hold of you. We're happy to help if anyone wants to come in. We have two locations, uh, Pasadena and uh, between Echo Park and downtown LA and that 
um, uh, area right near Echo Park Lake. Um, we're all, we also do virtual training. So we have people, we have clients, we have clients in Florida, uh, Maryland, <laughs> West Virginia, right. yeah. Seattle, um, who work with our trainers online through Zoom or FaceTime. So, yeah. Um, if anybody wants to give, give us a call, our number, uh, we accept calls and texts to is 626-999-4850. Um, and our website is thestrengthshop.com, shop spelled S-H-O-P-P-E. Like the old English way. Yes. Let's bring Steve back. Great information. We'll bring Steve back. And let's see. We also have. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hello, day in the perk today, too. We have, um, we, it is. National Be Somebody Day. And I think what it means is not about you being something, but being something to somebody else. It takes seconds to influence an, uh, another person with a smile, with help, with support. So take a look at that. And uh, if you want, if you would like the perk, Ginny will send it to you from the office. And our number is 626-359-0108 has fantastic uh, word search and a great way to communicate uh, some little activities and interaction, make it really easy to, to talk with another person by asking little questions and answering. Great, I love it. Items, so yeah, make a difference today. Make a difference in a child's life. I'm sure this was also influenced by the new movie that came out, uh, The Sound of Freedom. So um, definitely something that's become more and more aware uh, to people uh, in, in the area of human trafficking. Um, I've seen it actually with some of my clients. Uh, I had a conservatee who was bamboozled by a woman, actually a serial abuser, who also, when we went onto the property, it was like, huh, I wonder where she needs that brand new Mercedes Benz van. And uh, then she had, long story short, she had these four tough sheds in the back and a little area in the back of the house where she would be moving all these people from the van into these little sheds to live. So I'm glad they were able to capture um, that individual. She's still actually not in jail. She is someone to be watchful. And there are some pretty scary people out there using seniors to pursue their, their um, trafficking uh, interests um, because they may not know what's going on around them. So uh, just an interesting day for sure. But um Steve, tell us about what is the um, day in sports. I'm going to bring Kavitha back to you. Sure. Oh, should I wait for her? Here she oh. is. Awesome. <laughs> this has been amazing. Thanks. So the year was 1973. The location was Atlanta, Georgia. And Hank Aaron, known as Hammering Hank Aaron, hit his 700th home run off of Ken Brett of the Philadelphia Phillies. At the time, he was only the second person in the history of Major League Baseball to hit at least 700 home runs. Um, the first person, of course, was Babe Ruth. In April of 1974, Hank uh, surpassed Babe Ruth's home run record. He went on to hit 755 home runs in his career, which uh, was time spent with the Milwaukee and Atlanta Braves and the Milwaukee Brewers, and his record held for 33 years. Wow. Wow. That's pretty amazing. That's yeah. great. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for the wonderful information, Kavitha. Blooming Health. I mean, how fantastic and what a great name because it just, I think, will help to, to support and help our seniors bloom with all these fantastic resources. Melinda, awesome. love your information. Go to the Strength Shop. Steve, thanks for your question. And if anybody needs any other support, we're here for you at About Senior Solutions, and Ginny will get that perk out to you for free. So Ginny, G-I-N-N-Y, at AboutSeniorSolutions.com. Everybody have a fantastic weekend, and we will see you next week on Visionary Aging. Stay hydrated. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye. Thanks.